you'll be happy to know that the second part of our lesson is a lot shorter than the first part. And just like every other unit of the year, we go through a type of function, we learn about its graphs, how it behaves, and then we talk about its equations, how to solve them. Well, we're going to do the same thing for logs and exponentials. The logs are actually the easier ones to solve. So here's what we're going to do. We've already seen some basic log equations, and the thing we kept coming back to was if you've got a log and an x inside of that log, you're going to have to exponentiate both sides to get rid of the log. And that's still going to be our plan. But I can't do it yet, because exponentiating both sides right now wouldn't help. Because if I try and exponentiate that whole side, I don't have any way to simplify 5 to the log to the 3 log base 5 of x minus log base 5 of 4. I, there's too much going on there. So the easier way to go, what we're going to do instead, is first always condense both sides. Condense all logs. So I'm going to take 3 times log base 5 of x minus log base 5 of 4, and I'm going to condense that. You can do it in two steps or one step if you feel comfortable log base 5 of x cubed minus log base 5 of 4. I don't really have anything to do with log base 5 of 16. It's already by itself anyway. And we can condense further. Just a quick note, what I did there was I took the 3 and I moved it to the exponent using the power property. And now I can use the quotient property and say the log, the difference of two logs is equal to the log of the quotient 5x cubed over 4 equals log base 5 of 16. And now that I've condensed my first side into a single log, now it'll actually help to exponentiate both sides. And remember, you can use the phrase exponentiate both sides. If you're having trouble with that, you can be a little bit more descriptive and say add a base of 5 to both sides. And the reason to do that is because what happens when you exponentiate 5 to the log base 5, the 5, the exponential and the log of both of them have the same base of 5, so they cancel each other out. And what we're left with is 5x cubed over 4 equals 16. And from there we can solve whatever type of equation we're left with. It'll often be quadratic, here we've got a cubic, um, we'll have some rational functions, whatever type of equation we're left with, just solve it. So 5x cubed equals 16. I'm not sure um, why that became a 5. Oh, I know why that became a 5. Sorry about that. That 5 doesn't belong there. That was silly of me. Um, I read this base as an exponent, so there is no 5 there. It's just x cubed equal over 4 equals 16. Sorry about that. And so we can solve that just by multiplying both sides by 4. x cubed equals 64. And then we can take the cube root of both sides. x equals 4. Now, you do have to check all arguments. All we want to do, when we saw this in our last couple of lessons, all we want to do is check to make sure that all the arguments are positive, even with this x value we found. x can be negative, but the arguments cannot. So if x is 4, well, 16 is always positive, 4 is always positive. If x is positive 4, then x, that argument, is just positive. It's positive 4, so that works. So since all arguments work, we're good, and that means that 4 is actually our answer. Okay, we'll walk through the next example, too. So again, we'll condense first. There's nothing to condense at all on the right-hand side. That's fine. All we need to do is use the product property, say the sum of those two logs is just like the log of the product of both of those arguments, x times x minus 6. And again, we're up to the part where we exponentiate both sides. Condensing there was pretty fast. Now we exponentiate both sides. We want to get rid of a log base 4, so we use an exponential with a base of 4. Notice how on the right-hand side, nothing cancels out. The canceling out all happens on the left. We're left with x times x minus 6. On the right-hand side, we actually have to do the exponential that we made. We made that 4 squared, so that's equal to 16. And then we'll solve this 
x squared minus 6x. Um, it will factor, so I'll bring that 16 over and subtract. x minus 8 times x plus 2 equals 0. And then we split and solve here. x minus 8 could equal 0, which means x equals 8. Or x plus 2 could equal 0, which means x equals negative 2. I know I did that fast. Please remember to pause, rewind, slow down the video as much as you need. But we do have to be careful here. We have to remember to check all of our arguments. If x is 8, are any of those arguments negative? Well, if x is 8, then that argument is positive. And 8 minus 6 is 2, so that's positive, so we're good. 8 is, in fact, a solution. So we can circle that one. It is correct. On the other hand, if x is equal to 2, sorry, negative 2, well, I can't plug in a negative 2. Can't do it into either x, in either log in this case. Because that would make that the log base 4 of negative 2, which doesn't exist. And so that means that x can't equal negative 2. And that is not an option.